Hello and welcome to the Brooklyn Rails 1013th New Social Environment. I'm Eleanor, a programs associate here at the Rail, and I have the huge pleasure and privilege today of being your MC for a conversation with Alice Notley, Abigail Lang, Mikael Bat Batala, and Cole Swenson. And now I'll introduce today's guests and host. Alice Notley has published over 40 books of poetry. Her most recent books of poetry are Early Works, the Speak Angel series, and For the Ride. Over the years, Notley edited and co or co-edited three poetry journals, Chicago, Scarlet, and Gare du Nord. Abigail Lang is an associate professor of US literature and translation at Université Paris-Cité. She's the author of La Conversation Transatlantique, an, ex an account of the exchanges between French and US poets after 1968. A translator of some 20 volumes of English poetry into French, she has written two books and a spy novel on translation. She curates the long-running Poets and Critics program and the Double Change Bilingual Reading Series. Since the late 1990s, Mikael Batala has been actively engaged in the poetic scene. He became the director of Centre International de Poésie Marseille in 2019. Uh, from 2000 onwards, he became interested in the pedagogies of poetic writings. His writings have been published in numerous magazines and books and by various publishers. And our host today, Cole Swenson, is the author of 17 volumes of poetry and a collection of critical essays called Noise That Stays Noise. A former Guggenheim Fellow, she's been a finalist or recipient of many awards. She's translated over 20 volumes of poetry, prose, and art criticism from French and won the 2004 Penn USA Award in Literary Translation. It's so wonderful to have you all on the NSC today, and I'm thrilled to pass it over to you, Cole, to get us started. Great. Thank you very much. And thanks to The Rail, as always, for welcoming this program, which is dedicated to focusing on and honoring the people who actually do the work to get poetry to the people, uh, and often at the sacrifice of time that they could be spending on their own work. So we really appreciate it. And we're particularly delighted to be mentally going to Marseille today and uh, spending time with the people at the CIPM or the Centre International de Poésie Marseille. So we're gonna start as we always do with a couple of readings. We'll hear from Alice Notley and then Mikhail Batala. So let's take it away, Alice. Thank you. Uh, these are two poems from a book that's coming out in April called Being Reflected Upon. The Cure. You start and then you make rules for yourself gradually. It is predicament same, how to live but why? Animal habitudes so complex or am I an uninherited mind that obeys no rules of my species? I perhaps speak as a badger or stork, and if I am granite, I've gathered my mean together over millennia, my mean and adamantine depth, the spars and no junk. Keep portraying something. I just don't want to. In 2003, I am diagnosed with hepatitis C and write in the pines and co-edit, introduce, and annotate the collected poems of Ted Berrigan. The treatment legendarily grueling strips me of weight and moral confidence. My liver is scarred, but do I have that or anything? I perhaps speak as a bat, wolf, bear, or owl with its terrifying howl in the forest, wild and drear. It's connected by song, too. I can see the atoms singing to each other, can't you? I was welcomed into the French community of medical patients in which you are treated regardless of worth, monetary, or social. They treated me, and I wasn't pretty, jolie, ou française. What is being sung? The song of your location as physical one whose molecules observable cohere. Can you hear them? I told the story of myself as folk and vibrated to lead belly and man in the long black coat. I had often worn one myself, blind Willie McTell, and careless love, the species motto. 
I am watching the election, I mean now, but politics being shitty species behavior of competition, domination, and looking for excuse to hate and beat up. So don't do it. A line from the theme song of Veretta. It's been, it was just one of those things in my head in the kitchen mornings recently. Also, I'm wild again, beguiled again, etc. We saw an emu with its head hole staring at us in a zoo last week. American culture now figures nearly naked women singing songs they wrote too. The turtle's heads pointed all in one direction. This is how crazy you caused me. How crazy you caused me. You caused me to leave my home, everyone causing everyone everything. None of these folk beg forgiveness for being like they are material fools. I was the soul of it. You forgot how to hear my whispers deaf as posts. Wood, the tribe of wood, that is. I would have blood taken, I was tested, was anemic, had rashes and pondered my interferon-caused depression, pitying my doctor during the, during the gross global warming-caused canicule of 03. She couldn't take the heat like me. I carried a chilled injectable dose to Chicago so I could read poetry and met Mrs. Green, a housekeeper at the U of C faculty club who placed her hand on my heart and prayed to Jesus for my recovery, one of the genuine thrills of those years, I assured her she probably wasn't suffering a recurrence of her cancer. Last time I was there, still alive, had retired. A Parisian acolyte of a garrister had also in her boutique suddenly put her hand, even fist against my heart. They were worried. People love each other, don't they? Don't they? And the animals we disrupt so huddle flesh to flesh. It can't be right how we do things. So I could see better. I became myopic as a child, fiddling with the particles of your soul. The wind as advisor, or I accept none. Nothing but a cure. And this is Jim Carroll's ass. Nothing seems real. Yet I'm willing to play the real game for ones I love. And when I'm sick, I go get pills. But more and more hovering above it, I'm. And then is it a question of for who? That's why I no longer have memories. I don't care about them. Though I can contrive more, but I don't belong to them anymore. Do you really think everyone is benighted? Someone in effect asked. I guess I said yes. What emanates from me is crackling love, electrical currents, and aliveness. Everything else I do, remember playing games. Pac-Man at midnight in the months before Ted died. Jim Carroll's favorite being Ms. Pac-Man. One has an official position that humanity's history has erroneously deemed women untalented, ineffectual at its projects over literally millions of years Therefore, humanity is likely to be wrong about anything, no everything, and nothing whatsoever is happening except for pain. Isn't this ridiculous? Yet, I like to remember Jim Carroll mooning Ted at the entrance to Julian's Billiard Academy. The first time I met him, he was showing off for me and had a pearly ass. This is cerebrality. But not within the time frame of, frame of my research, Somewhere in a room outside this whole place, Earth, an infinitely large, unshaped one, this poem, already written, is being translated through tubes or pathways into my mind or heart, I am, and it's all covered by me, who already wrote it. I don't have an audience. We are a membrane of receptive contiguity, abstract, abstractly avial, and wing white. Thank you very much, Alice. This is wonderful to hear. And we'll segue right over to Mikael. Yes, thank, thank you, Cora. I will try something I never tried before. It's to read my own poem in English. Uh, poems uh, which are, are, have been translated in English uh, for a bilingual edition of this book named uh, autour around with the photograph um, Benoit Fougerol. And uh, the, the book is in two, two parts. The first part with the photograph and the second part with the 
the poems. Uh, so we have the English on the uh, left um, sheet and uh, the French uh, on the right. So I will try to read four small poems. Um, I train uh, myself uh, this afternoon, but I'm not sure uh, if it's so awful, you, you tell me stop, stop, and I will stop. Matter, the comma, white, of the northeast foot, plastic, twig, twig and twig, removed, minuscule rubble, this petal of Bougainvilliers, do they besiege it, crackers, folds, unstickings. By following the domestic strata of cement, galvanized plains, gray pattern of iron, its bedding, relief, assures the transition from the industrious mineral to the iron, rising from the massive tray. Bolted, the wine and the sky blue dust. Uh, I want to uh, add something uh, uh, about the translation. The, this poem has been translated uh, by uh, a friend uh, of mine uh, passed away a few years ago. Uh, it was a very great poet and uh, French, uh, Franco-American poet named Christophe Marchantis. Uh, very uh, great uh, poet, very great translator from English to French and from French to English. And uh, a second person helped him to translate this poem was uh, Jennifer Kadik. Jennifer Kadik, she is a poet from Ohio and she teach in France uh, in the Mulhouse University. So the second. Bank, not really a bank, a black small road, cracked from fixed bridge to viaduct. At port side, a large bed of very fluid soup, however laden, clear leak, to the cumbersome substructure of which the ages of under surface keep repeating their modernish moth aesthetic. To shatter, to cast, to unshutter, crossings fly, crossings fly out of a big number of speed per minute roaring mastodons. Of the deck from the piers does no migrate a wave in the current at the surface of the very emotional water yet. Is it correct? Yes. Call? Perfect. 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 No, uh, perfect. I'm not sure, but. <laughs> the, the cold tangibility of things, body, discolor, passion to transcribe, transcribe suspension, microscopic vocabulary stupor. The mute is really mute. Only image deep in the silence of the simple strict appearance. Visual presentations, sonorous, but visual first, even so, act of the sequence to enter it, populate even the winter. And the last. Via the water, the sky, comes the white between the branches, the changing, changing leaves, its soft swell unclimatizable to the terrestrial geometry's kinematics. Just as well, apart from the fact that is perceived, 
would be the occasional appearance to the vo of the void, its effervescence, the initial pulsation, elasticity not membranous but into the mass, or the thickness of the everywhere at once. Although keep at the distance through the analogy, this reflect with makes think, white makes think, a tangible schematization of the being. By the river, between the stable bank and the train of barge speeding away. Thank you very much. Thank and much. thank you for starting us out with some poetry. Uh, and we'll now go to the main event of the day, which is the Adventures in Poetry exhibition curated by Abigail Lang. And let's just start by hearing about the exhibition. And I think then you're gonna follow up with some visuals. So we'll get to virtually be there as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Cole. And thank you, Cole, Eleanor, and the entire, and Chloe, and the entire Brooklyn Rail Publishing and Transit team for your interest and invitation. Uh, thank you all uh, in the room. It's a, it's a pleasure to see so many familiar faces. Uh, and it's a pleasure to be speaking with, to, with Alice and, and Michael and, and all of you today. Um, so it all began with an invitation from CPM from its, and, and, and its director, Michael Battaglia, for which I'm extremely grateful. Uh, working with the CIPM team has been a privilege and a wonderful adventure of its own. Um, it was a collective effort, so I'd like to acknowledge um, Julia Camin, the head of the library, and her co colleagues Cassandra Pépin, uh, François Lespieu, the administrator who had the long experience of organizing exhibits, who, and he offered many great visual uh, ideas, uh, and also Dina El Noamani and Elizabeth, Elizabeth Stephen. Uh, the CIPM was founded in 1990, and it's an exceptional institution entirely in the service of poetry. It organizes poetry readings, debates, translation workshops, offers residencies for poets and brings poets to the classroom. Uh, its poetry library is a treasure trove holding over 50,000 items, including many rare items. And, and it's also a walk-in library op open to all. Some uh, five years ago, M Michael started a series called Diagonal to draw attention to the riches of the library. So in 2021, the first diagonal was devoted to Anne-Marie Albiac, uh, a French poet, and the second to, La Di to, to um, uh, ma poetry magazines. So this is the third. And the brief, you know, wh what I was asked to do was to take stock and show and highlight the collection of US poetry held at the library. So take stock. Uh, was fun. It mostly involved climbing up and down ladders and pulling out piles of books from the stacks uh, to spread them out onto large tables, flip through them, and share our excitement. This enabled us to establish that the core of the collection cons consisted in books published between the 60s and the 90s by writers affiliated with what has come to be known uh, as the New American Poetry after Don Allen's landmark anthology, The New American Poetry 1945-1960 from Grove. Uh, this is coherent with the uh, acquisition history of the collect collection. Many books were donated by poet Jacques Roubault, who in the early 1970s set out on a thorough investigation of post-war US, uh, post US poetry and some pre-war figures such as the Objectivist and Gertrude Stein, with the notion that US poets had explored the possibilities of free verse much more inventively than the French surrealists. Roubault uh, relayed his findings in special issues and in an anthology he co-edited with Michel de Guy and published with Gallimard in 1980, which has played an important role in promoting US poetry in France. More books were donated uh, by French poet Anne-Marie Albiac, which, uh, which she received from US and UK poets from the 1960s onward. A third donation was made by US poet Gustave Sobin 
in 2020. So when it came to organizing the exhibit to make it legible, our best option was to use the groupings and labels proposed by Don Allen in his 1960 anthology and simply extend the principle to, through the 80s. So basically B generation, San Francisco Renaissance, Black Mountain College, language poetry, New York School. All these labels are all the, all these are already familiar names for for French readers of US poetry. So I can give you a quick tour of the exhibit. Let me share my screen uh, using pictures uh, made by Dina El Noamani. Can you, I think you should be able to see my, my screen. Okay. Um, so this is the gate to La Vieille Charité, beautiful uh, buildings that where the C CIPM is housed in the old neighborhood Le Panier in Marseille. So this is the entrance to, to Le CIPM. And this is a first general view of the exhibit, uh, organized around six large uh, tables or glass cases containing books. There are vertical structures showing pamphlets, records, and posters. On the back wall, wall you have a slideshow alternating covers and contents of the books shown in the tables. The books in the table being mostly closed, we assume the public would like to peek inside. So this is what the, you know, the, the, the projection looks like with an open book. This is another general view showing a chronological timeline of the, of the literary underground 1960-1980 established by Steve Clay and Rodney Phillip and included as a gatefold pullout in their landmark source book, a secret location on the Lower East Side Adventures in Poetry 1960-1980, which proved an invaluable, invaluably helpful uh, source resource in conceiving the exhibit. Next is one of the five monitors showing poets reading or talking, which greatly animate the room. Uh, three out of the five monitors show a selection from Richard O. Moore's USA Poetry, a series of beautiful documentaries made in 1966 for national educational television. They're available from, uh, on Penn Sound, which has gener which has gen very generously enabled us to share video and audio recordings as part of the exhibit. At the entrance, the visitor is greeted by Henry Hale's highly kinetic, almost stroboscopic uh, movie, Money. On the facing wall are two complete series of Something Else Press's Great Bear pamphlets. And on the right, a selection of Black Sparrow pamphlets. And in the middle, you have Gary Snyder reading in one of Richard O. Moore's movie. Here is uh, Denise Levertov on the screen above a small case with some landmark anthologies. And on the right, uh, LPs from Giorno po Poetry Systems. Here is a frame in one of Moore's documentary uh, on from Moore's documentary on Anne Sexton, and below you you have a case focusing on introspection and performance of the self, with books from poets associated with deep image, confessional poetry, and feminist poetry. This is a wall <laughs> with printouts, <laughs> and, and, and I know Alice loves it. Uh, a wall with printouts of posters announcing poetry readings. Um, the variety and inventiveness in graphic design I find amazing. Um, that these announcements mention the day and month, but never the year, testifies to their ephemeral function in what I find a very poignant way. You never know which year uh, you know, these readings take place. So the six large tables, the first one, uh, you know, begins with the beat generation and the San Francisco Renaissance with books by City Light, Lights Books, Oh Yes, White Rabbit Press. Uh, table two revolves around Origin, Sid Corman's Origin uh, magazine and Black Mountain. 
the, the third table, um, well, is all around scores, performance, and ethnopoetics, uh, based on you know Olson's notion of the page as score, Cage's composition classes at the New School for Social Research, and his question, you know, where do we go from here towards theater? Um, Dick Higgins' Intermedia, which he defined as an uncharted land that lies between collage, music, and the theater, and, and his Something Else Press. Uh, you can see Mecklow's The Pronouns, a collection of 40 dances, uh, which were instructions for the Judson Dance Workshop. Uh, David Anton's orally improvised talk poems. And, uh, uh, and anthologies and magazines related to ethnic poetics, by which you know, Rothenberg questioned the boundaries and European-centric definition of poetry and embarked on a vast exploration of ritualized verbal forms in non-Western societies. The fourth table uh, is devoted to first and second generation New York school and foregrounds the importance of collaboration, be especially between poets and painters, and I'll come back to this later. Uh, this, we have a second table with new, second generation New York school and the poetry project. Uh, featuring some early books by Alice, Phoebe Light with a cover by Alex Katz, Songs for the Unborn Second Baby with a cover by George Schneemann, and Alice Ordered Me to Be Made, and uh, Margaret and Dusty. Uh, each table comes with its own audio environment. Uh, scanning a QR code, visitors can access six or seven audio files usually of a poet reading from his or her work. Uh, I'm grateful to, to Dina for de devising the system which enables visitors to listen on site or through the CIPM website. And here's the, the sixth large table uh, revolving around you know, early language poetry with a selection of the gorgeous Toomba chapbooks that Lynn Hedginian published, uh, printed in letterpress in the 70s and early eight, 80s. Barrett Wadden's Magazine Hill, Bob Perlman's, no, Magazine This, Bob Perlman's Hill, Hills, the first edition of Nate Mackey's Hambone, and a selection of books by Keith and Rosemary Waldrop's Providence Burning Deck, uh, which published book both in letterpress and offset. And uh, since, um, Rachel in, is in the room. I'll mention drafts in the, the, the blue cover of drafts at the top of the, the slide. Uh, and so as we were organizing the several of the tables, you know, visual leitmotifs kept appearing. So here you, you, you know, there's a visual leitmotif uh, of a circular pattern uh, appearing on Susan Howe's articulations of sound forms in time. Rosemary Waldrop's A Key to the Language of America, Ronald Johnson's Radios, um, and Perlman's The First World. We put together a leaflet that visitors can take home, uh, which provides further reading and the complete list of the books in the exhibit. Uh, I know some vid visitors decide to spend time in the library as well. And there is a table with books for sale at the at, at the exit, uh, mostly recent translations of US poetry into French, which is a way to bring the conversation up to date by including new generations of US poets and the interest of a new generation of French translators. Currently, a growing there is a growing interest in women poets, feminist poets, indigenous poets in France. Um, in addition, the CIPM library will progressively bring its holdings of U.S. poetry up to date by acquiring recent books of poetry. And I'll finish with a view of the opening night and Alice's formidable, formidable talk entitled Adventures So Far. Alice was extremely generous and she presented an overview of her writing career stopping to read from 10 poems spanning her entire life in, in writing.
Great. Thank you so much. It was just so wonderful to get all those images and to have a sense of what it's like to be in that room. So I think we all would have loved to be there for opening night. Um, and Alice, it would be great to hear you talk a little bit about what was it like to be there at the time? What what stands out to you in your memories from New York in those years? And Oh, you want me to talk about New York or the exhibit? <laughs> well, which, which I, I, both. But I, was I, I New York uh, is sixteen years of uh, of uh, experience, and the exhibit is actually one thing. So I could probably do the exhibit better because I was overwhelmed by it. Actually, I I uh, Abigail asked me to write a talk, and uh, and she told me about uh, the books, and she told me about the the collections. Uh, and Jacques Rubeau's collection, and she suggested uh, that I write and read from uh, a little bit about each each of the first four books, which are these very early books of mine. And I did that, and I found it very interesting to do this because I discovered that uh, what I had written very early on uh, established uh, a practice that I'm still involved in. So it, it was it was a great learning experience for me to write the talk. But then I walked into the room and saw all these books all together. They were the books that my friends had written uh, in the 60s and 70s. And I was overwhelmed by it. Um, it. It was, I had this very kind of luminous experience of seeing all these books, seeing all them together I'm crying now just I realized we had done it right and that's what that was what I saw that, that we had done the right thing that we had conducted ourselves correctly even though we fought all the time that we had made these beautiful books we had written this poetry and that we had communicated with each other in all different kinds of ways we knew what we were doing and it stood and I loved the library I went into the library I be and I, the first thing I saw was the sign that said collection of Anne-Marie Albiac. And I knew that I was going to find these books by Doug uh, inscribed to Anne-Marie and, and Claude. And I found them. I found these really early books with these inscriptions by Doug in the 60s to Anne-Marie and Claude because they had been friends then. It, it was so beautiful to see his writing and these things he said from way, way before I met him. And then I went out into the room and I gave the talk and behind me, these things were flashing on and off from time to time. And uh, the, the, later I saw like inscriptions I had made in these books that Jacques had, that, that I had written in the seventies. Uh, <laughs> I saw my handwriting, it was from, from this other time. It was just very, very beautiful. Right. That is what I have. Yeah, I, I can imagine how deeply moving it would be to have your own kind of young adulthood brought back in such a, a graphic <laughs> way. It's and I was in this case, you know, and then Joe was there. Joe Brainerd was there on the other side. There were my books and there were Joe's. But then, like, you, you look on the wall and you see the poster of little Nancy with her, with her skirt up showing her penis. It's like being flashed by Joe. You know, it's it always it always just amazes me that, that I go, whoop. When I see that image, you know, <laughs> she has a penis. <laughs> uh, it would be great too, just to hear more about the CIPM. So maybe we can segue to you, Mikael, and you can let us know kind of the global structure and what the goals and what the future is. And... Okay. Thank you very much, Alice, uh, for what you said about the library. Uh, it's very uh, emotional for me to hear you uh, speak about the library because uh, we loved our library. Uh, as uh, Abigail said, it's a very uh, unique treasure. And um, I just want to um, uh, 
precise something you said, uh, Abigail. Abigail, it's it, uh, this exhibition, Adventures in Poetry. It's not the third of the series uh, diagonal de, of the catalog, but it's the seventh. Uh, uh, it's the third. Of, it's it's not a problem, but it's in, it's interesting to know that it's the seventh because uh, the concept of this exhibition is to. Um, imagine, imagine you 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 ask a question uh, to the library, and the library uh, answers something. And you ask the question of uh, American poetry. You can ask the question of magazine. You can ask the question of um, uh, oops, we lost you. You you're muted. Okay, uh, you, you, you can ask many questions uh, and uh, about the story, uh, the, the history of poetry, or about the, uh, the own um, vision of one poet. And we, uh, always, uh, we already ask to one artist, uh, uh, it was, uh, for example, Eric Vatier, uh, a very famous uh, French artist, um, uh, to uh, um, imagine his own diagonal, so his own uh, vision of the of the library. Uh, it was a, 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 sm uh, 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 a smaller, uh, uh, smaller um, exhibition, but it was very interesting because uh, you 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 can uh, have the. Uh, the point of view of just one person uh, he is an artist and uh, he, he used uh, the the library so it's um, for us uh, uh, each time uh, a new um, uh, discover uh, of uh, what we have uh, all the uh, all the, all all uh, year long, uh, uh, just uh, with us, uh, all the the, the books uh, are in, which are in the in the in the library. So uh, I will read something. Sorry, uh, but uh, I prefer uh, something about uh, the saving. So first, uh, a long story. Uh, something uh, Abigail said uh, already, but uh, I will repeat. Uh, um, sorry. CPM was founded in 1990 in Marseille by three people. A poet, Julien Blaine, who was also the town deputy cultural director, Robert Vigourou, the town's mayor, and Emmanuel Ponsard, a publisher and festival organizer, who was also the first director, my predecessor, during a 28 years until uh, 2018. From the outset, CIPM's ambition has been to be a reference institution for contemporary poetry. At the time, in the early 90s, this was quite unique. The singularity of CIPM's approach to poetry was immediately reflected in its name, which highlighted the international dimension of the field. Two essential, two essential aspects of which concern performance and translation. 34 years after its foundation, CPM still exists. It's keep up with development in French and foreign poetry and continues to place the notion of meeting, discovery, and understanding at the heart of its activities, giving poets themselves the opportunity to speak, to speak out about their art. 
So, the CEPAM activities. Following this brief introduction, I'd like to try and give you an overview of the CEPAM activities. So, let's have a look to the, prog to the program. The programmation. We've been talking about exhibition. There are three types catalog diagrams. For example, um, Adventures in Poetry is one. Documentary monographic, such as the forthcoming uh, on devoted to the work of poet Patrick Berard Valdois. And other that fall outside these two categories and which we don't know exactly how to call. On average, there are three exhibitions a year. The, the other very important part of the program concerns meeting, reading, conference, study days, and so on. These events take place over two seasons from March to June and from September to November. Each week during these periods, we hold two or three meetings in our space or off-site. Off to give you an idea, last year in 23, we organized just over 90 encounters and welcome 130 poets, writers, artists, publishers, and so on. The library. The library was found in the the CPM. It is a free open source center all year long to all audiences. We have today a collection of more than uh, 55,000 books with three specific collections the review and the magazines, the American Library, uh, initiated by a first donation from Jack Rubo, as Abigail said and the Anne-Marie Albiac uh, library, personal library, uh, constituted with the poet's entire world personal library, donated after her passing by um, a widower uh, writer, Claude Royer Genoux, uh, in uh, 2015. You can find here one of the most important collection of poetry books in Europe. We have poetry from French, French speakers poets, and from many other language and origins. The editions are often in the original language and in varied translation too. Its collection are enriched by donations and that complement and increase its scientific and heritage value. It welcomes a very varied audience of readers, as well as the many action of our sort of school. Master class of work on workshop, adult writing workshop, we receive also from middle and high school classes, others welcomed in residence. Uh, sorry, but... I'm, about the partners uh, now about the partners network and bringing the gap between poetry and other field uh, it is it possible to list all the CPM's partners there are all kinds of them regional national international from small independent bookshops in Marseille to foreign ministries of culture, also from literature festivals to book fairs in Europe, theaters or university, from various book offices to French institutes. The goal of all, all these partner, partnerships, sorry, is to raise awareness and defend the existence of contemporary poetry. This way, we are able to broaden the scope and increase the reception of poetry's work in fields 
as varied as the, show, the, the social, social science, cinema, visual arts, music, performing arts, and of course, within literature itself. And it, each and every event, it's the poet who would take the speech. Take the speech, sorry. One last aspect before concluding. Sorry, I lose, um, I lose something. No. One last aspect before concluding about educational project recognized for its quality and uniqueness. This is an unclear part of the CIPM that we are not quite sure exists or not, but we call it the school. We use this name to bring together the many educational actions we carry out in primary and secondary schools, university and art schools, as well as for adults and teachers. This school is not really a school, but it's a way of defending an idea of poetry as a practice and a knowledge that can be the subject of ver various trainings. It allows us to forge links with young people and also with students who write and want to learn contemporary poetry. Every year we are surprised to see these young poets appear in the workshops. So what's next, uh, Corey? Beyond our spring program that you can discover on our new and very beautiful website, uh, it's our near future. We are currently in the middle of the process about developing the evolution of the structure concerning an economic model. The French economic model uh, erected from the 30 glorious years concept, public money plus free access, is unfortunately in process of disappearing. While the CIPM has always been part of this institution utopia, it must now try to adapt to this new situation. So the first challenge for us is to survive. Generally speaking, the question of the future is inseparable of the financial resources. Today, the CPM team consists of six full-time staff members. In the future, we hope to be able to find the funds that, we, that will allow to us to increase this number. We have in mind what I call an ideal CIPM. It is a large house with plenty of rooms for the resident, office, well-equipped uh, well meeting rooms, a very large library. We dream, if it's possible, of the banks of a pretty river. I let you imagine what happens next. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great overview. And, and obviously, we, I imagine everybody now wants to go visit. So next time you're anywhere, <laughs> or say, take the detour and go. It's a really a marvelous, exciting place. And I just love to hear about all of the connections that you make with all these different levels and, and niches of the local society and, and the broader. It's really great. Um, we have a few minutes left, and I'd, I'd love to kind of segue back to the exhibition and to you, Alice, with a particular question. I know you go back to New York regularly, and I was thinking that despite the many years, uh, I imagine there are things in the poetry world in New York that have not changed so much. And I wondered if you could talk a little bit about what you see having maybe changed greatly, but also what, what remains both in terms of material things and spirit? Oh, I'm not sure if I could talk to that question. Uh, it's all there, actually. But, you know, uh, what people look like change and what, what they talk about changes. And uh, uh, 
the the organizations uh, the, the the way the way they're they're organized they're not uh the community is is not localized anymore so the the community say around uh, the, the poetry project is not local to the east village the way it was when i went first went there it's hard all the all the years i've dealt with it it's been a question of like what is the community and the community keeps getting whiter and whiter but the the the, the part that's right in the neighborhood like is it, it it doesn't feel like it's there anymore and it's a different kind of organization and i have a feeling that that's going on all over the city but i'm not sure because uh the poetry project has been there for so long. Uh, the Uptown Y has been there for so long, and uh, the uh, Poets House is, is still there. Everything is still there. It's in place, uh, uh, and it just kind of nothing seems to disappear exactly. It it goes with the changes. Um, it's always moving to see that it's still there. I, I'm always glad that I can still go to poetry readings if I can walk. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, the, the body gives way, gives out, but uh, there are a lot of young people all the time writing poetry, giving readings, being very earnest about everything, fighting, uh, trying to figure out what to write next. Everyone is always trying to figure out what to write next. Mm -hmm. That's all you do. The next thing to write it's the most important thing in the world and if you don't do it everyone will die <laughs> it's kind of like thank that thank you for keeping on writing <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah and abigail where do you see your work curatorial and creative and um critical going from this exhibition do you see it going somewhere completely different or is this exhibition going to somehow segue into a new project for you? Um, I don't, it's, I don't see it as the beginning of something new. It's, it's part of what I, of my, you know, long, uh, you know, perennial interest in, in 20th and 21st uh, American poetry. Uh, it, it was a new form for me because, you know, I'm, I'm an academic, I'm a translator, but, you know, putting books, you know, telling a story or organizing a meaning visually and in, in, in space, that was, you know, it, it was the formal adventure that, that was most, um, you know, was new for me. Um, and, and I, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And and I think it it's it worked well because it you know these most of these poets were also uh, doubled as 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 publishers, uh, and and you know many of the the covers and the book design uh, and the collaborations with painters these all tell stories uh, you know uh, even you know the, the the layout on the page you know composition by field. Or you know either you know super, extremely narrow poems or spreading out across the page, um, the use of visuals, you know, the the you know there's there's a great deal of you know by calling it adventures in poetry. So you know it, it refers to um to uh, Larry Fagan's uh, small press and, and, and magazine called Adventures in Poetry that he established in 1967, I think. Um, but it's, it was also, you know, I, I felt that I wanted to convey the, the excitement uh, of these years. You know, it, it's, it's a, I see it as a, uh, an adventure in form, uh, formats and, 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 and group formations. So, you know, not form, uh, as informalist, but but more you know as an unbounded process oriented exploration, um, wherein you know the, the the poem was became a vehicle for exploring reality, consciousness, and language. And I think this you can is made palpable in, in the also in in the in the the material dimension of the. Uh, of the books, and and I was very moved by by, by what uh, Alice said, and and I, if if we have one minute, I'll, I'll share, uh, you know, just uh, 
I wanted to show you. So I don't have the, the dedication uh, that the, the um, that um, Alice mentioned, uh, you know, I, I saw it in the exhibit, but I don't have a, a picture of it. But, you know, this is, I have two, two images of, you know, of books that are, have been inscribed. This is a, you know, the, the Yahé letters that Anne-Marie Albiac gave to Claude Roy Journou, her, her partner, for, for Christmas 1965. And I like, obviously, I like the, the contrast between, you know, the book and, and the in, inscription. <laughs> and, and this is another one that I, that I really like. This is a, a, a dedication by Robert Duncan to Jacques Roubaud, uh, you know, beautifully inscribed. It's, it's almost like, you know, it's, it's, it's written, but it's also a drawing, uh, as in, you know, medieval uh, illuminations. And it's, you know, it's for Jacques Roubaud, uh, another child of Gertrude Stein. And, 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 and the rose is, is a large summer rose by Robert Dun Duncan. Uh, and, 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 and then he says in half French and in English, j'espère qu'il sera uh, a leaf from the rose. So I hope Jacques is also a leaf from the rose. And, you know, because they, they both, you know, loved uh, Gertrude Stein very, very, very much. Um, and, and yeah, I think that this is extremely moving, these, these well, the, 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 the inscriptions, but also sometimes just the, the table of contents, uh, magazines like United Artists or uh, Arts and Literatures have had their um, tables of contents on, on the cover. And I keep seeing these as, you know, you know, when you share a table of contents, you, you become comrades, you know, you, the, the, the compagnon, you, 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 it, it's, it's like sharing the same table. And, and, you know, Fagan says, you know, I think uh, be, uh, being a publisher was a good, editing was a good way to make friends and hopefully not many enemies. So, you know, there were enmities, uh, but, but, you Having a good enemy is is also helps you to write. You know, it's Alice was saying the most important. <laughs> yeah, and lots of enemies. So you know, but but even but you're still part of that community, and it's a writing community, and and you know, and and it gives you someone to write to or against. Um, so yeah, maybe that's what I can say about the exhibit as well. well one of the things is that we could we felt that we could do anything we wanted to because we didn't have any money yeah. and we didn't have anyone to please monetarily. So we did whatever we wanted to when we made magazines, when we made books, when we published books, everything was, it was all malleable because, because there was so little money involved, but we never thought we were small press. I mean, I never heard that phrase used. We were publishing things. We were making things. We were getting our work out and we were having arguments about it. And that really comes out with the materials, I think. And I was thinking about the difference between extremely, you know, increasingly inexpensive offset printing and you know, now print on demand so that that offers a different kind of production availability. And there's something about the materiality of the Xerox or the mimeograph that is even more readily to hand and that really really sidesteps the issues of commerciality uh, in a way that must have been extremely inviting. And it, it uh, the proof is there in the amount of work that was produced in you that way. Start, you could start a magazine. You, I mean, anyone could start one right now in the room they're in. Yeah, yeah. So you, could start, you would start it and, and, uh, and then you would figure out how to get it around. You would go to a reading and then you'd pass it out. You didn't sell it. You didn't bother. Nobody was going to buy it. They waited to be given it. And then, yeah. But I, it, was real. it was real publication. Yeah. I was liking that phrase, um, Abigail, the idea of um, sharing the same table. Uh, that it seems like these are all ways. I'm picturing this reading where, Alice, you're there passing out something you've just produced, et cetera. So another way of sharing the same table seems seems crucial yes. to the yes. spirit of the time. 
I also, uh, what you said about proximity, that poets lived closer together so that you run into people in a cafe, in a bookstore, not only at readings, uh, must have been a very strong binder for community as well. Oh yes, you saw people every day and you had the conversation every day and it was the conversation, like how to make a poem, what so-and-so was writing, whether they were okay, whether they were aesthetically correct or not. Although I don't know that anyone would use a phrase like that, you know, but like, was it okay to write that poem? You know, it's like, I mean, as if the entire world cared. <laughs> uh, what poem that person was writing in that room and whether it was the right poem to write at that the at that time in that style for god's sake you know it can, was it any good was it any good and it, uh, it's still what i think about whether any of it's any good or not as if it's it's really burning to know is yeah. that poem any fucking good yeah. And then what's that mean? Obviously, I think we all, all obviously think a lot about what's what does good mean in terms of, of anything aesthetically based, but certainly poetry. Does it does it change language? Um, uh, Somebody showed me a, a list of assignments that I gave in some workshop, and one of them was write a good poem. And that was sarcastic, I think. But uh, then you had to interpret what it meant and what it was. And I don't know if anyone did it or not. <laughs> that might be a good note to kind of turn it over to uh, questions, comments. Uh, I know there's lots of people in the room that no doubt had participated in some of these things uh, too. So uh, Eleanor, you want to take it away? Yeah, we've got some some great questions and thank you so, so much, Cole and Mikael and Alice and Abigail for this amazing amazing conversation it's such a joy and I wish I could be in uh, CPM right now um, our first question today is from GE and I will ask on GE's behalf um, question is for Abigail um, in assembling these poets who refuse academism conformities and who stood against the great malicious sweeps of their time. Can we say that this show critiques and points beyond the simplicities of established ideologies? Thank you. Thank you for this question. Um, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but You know, for all the excitement and you know the the the, the and 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 ad, 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 complete admiration I have for the work, I'm also seeing it through my students' eyes, uh, and, and from you know 2023, and of course uh, it could have been done much better in terms of diversity, uh, you know, and 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 this but both both. Um, in the U.S., but I'm, I'm also thinking of, you know, the French poets who were in that conversation. Uh, so, you know, it, it's striking that, you know, after 65 uh, in New York in the Poetry Project, there are suddenly many more women taking, you know, uh, leading roles. Um, but for example, the uh, the Black Arts Movement, you know, there are hardly any, any books from from the Black Arts Movement in in the collection, and and you know that's you know there's a fire anthology I think there's uh, Amiri Baraka's the lecturer, but uh, Clarence Major, but you know very few uh, you know the, it's underrepresented. The, so you know, and, and I think the exciting thing that's happening now I think is is you know st students. Uh, especially in art schools, many art art students and and uh, and uh, and young writers are rediscovering uh, writers from the sixties, seventies, uh, and 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 revisiting them and, and bringing them over uh, along different paths. You know, uh, so I'm not I'm not sure that I mean I don't know if, if this answers your question, but that has that has certainly been on my mind while I was, you know 
curating the the exhibit and and which is why also we wanted to 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 uh to to bring the conversation up to date in in the library uh and, and in the bookstore also thank you abigail um thank you ge for that question our next question i will read also on behalf of a kaiser um and i think maybe it's for Mikael, but anyone can jump in. Um, they are about the programming at CPM. So which language are writing classes held in and what about and residencies? For poets, trans and translators of poets of poetry, which languages are the, um, a part of those programs? And where or how do I direct book donations? Uh. Thank you for the question. I think it's a, a question about uh, the translation. And uh, I, I can answer um, uh, what uh, is the, um, uh, the activity of translation of the CPM. Uh, we uh, practice many, uh, many forms of uh, translation uh, poetry. Uh, into many languages, but uh, sure, uh, most in, in French language, uh, from different uh, different langu language, not only English. And uh, the method that uh, we use is uh, generally a collective method. Uh, it's rare that uh, we organize something uh, with uh, just one. Uh, uh, one poet and one translator. Uh, generally, uh, we uh, organize a um, form of a seminar uh, with uh, three or four poets or three or four translators. Uh, poets who don't, who, who don't know the language of the other uh, poets and uh, they try to invent together a, a, a method how to translate uh, a poetry uh, writing in a language I don't know. Uh, and uh, it is a very experimental method, but uh, it produced uh, some uh, results uh, very uh, interesting. Uh, at, um, now we uh, are uh, supervise a project, a very big project, uh, about uh, the poetry of Jonas Mekas. Uh, we uh, are uh, uh, now uh, almost at the end uh, of the session of translation. We worked uh, with eight translators uh, on these projects uh, for two years. And uh, we translated uh, in French uh, almost all the poetry right in Lithuanian by uh, by Jonas Mekas in French. It's the first time and it will be a, a, a reference uh, a publication. Um, I don't know if I answer the question, but uh, that's why I want to say about the traduction now. There was an other aspect to the question, and that was, how does one donate books to the CIPF? Yeah. Yeah. Donate books? Yeah. Yeah. Do, books. Donations de livres? Ah, uh, we, um, we have many purposes of uh, donation, uh, but uh, as I tried to say, uh, uh, the the wall of the Vieille uh, Charité are a uh, very uh, large wall and we can push them uh, to uh, increase the space of the library. So uh, we uh, are obliged to uh, are very, very, very um, um, uh, attentive of uh, the, the, the sense of each uh, purpose of donation, and uh, we uh, uh, said uh, generally no because we can't uh, uh, 
enter the, 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 the volume of books that people want to give uh, us. So it's a, it's a very big problem for us, uh, but we uh, uh, accept uh, one, uh, one uh, donation by year uh, generally. The last one was uh, from the poet uh, Michel de Guy, uh, as a uh, it, he, he was uh, two uh, philosophers, he was a poet and a philosopher, and uh, an ex-president to the CIPN. Uh, and uh, after he passed away, uh, these uh, children gave us uh, all his uh, philosophy uh, library. It's a very big uh, philosophy uh, library. I have of, the Guise uh, library. Sorry, you have Michel library, library uh, uh, philosophy. Yes, yes, Michel de, Michel de library. Yes, Michel, yes, Michel de You know him. I, 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 I'm sure you yes, know him. Yes, I knew him far out. That's wonderful. Yes, yes, and uh, we have these books of uh, philosophy. Uh, that's an example. Thank you so much, Mikhail. Um, thanks for that great question as well. Our next question is going to be from Charlie. Charlie, you should be able to unmute. Thank you, Eleanor. Thank you, Cole and Mikhail and, and Alice. This has been such a tremendous program. Um, Alice, I had a question I wanted to ask um, about when you saw all those books. You said you had the feeling um, that you knew you and your friends had, had done it right. Um, yes, I, I'm really I wanted to ask if you could elaborate on that a little bit more. What does it mean to do it right? What is that? What is that? Well, I, I was it was I was basing it on the fact that I, I was always in, I had a feeling of conflict with everyone uh, or I would have it, it would go away when it come back and I, I've carried it around all my life. These are the people I was young with and you always fight with the people you were young with. And I wasn't sure that everything was all right. And I walked into this room and it was all translated into these books and these cases. And I suddenly knew it was right, mm. that we had done it right. And I loved them all. It was all correct, you know, it was just beautiful. And I've kept the feeling. Abigail did a, a, a magnificent job uh, of, of making this exhibit. The library is astonishing. People can go to this library and check out books that are signed by dead poets, that are inscribed to other poets. You, I mean, how? where else can you do that? So that's what I have to say. Thank you, Alice. Amazing. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you so much, Alice. And our last question today is going to be from Ty. Well, I thought, I think I was gonna ask about collaborations or something, but I think now I'm just sort of um, overwhelmed by uh, by Alice's answer to that last question. Um, yeah, that's really special. I've never heard of a library where you can do that and I've been looking for one all my life. Um, <laughs> I, I go hunting around the bookstores and I collect the things I can and I tell the people I love what I love and they try to gift it to me when they can. And it's a it's a beautiful thing that uh, that you and your friends did, Alice. Um, uh, but the thing I was going to ask about was, I think, uh, how you uh, how you all went about trying to show or not show or talk about or not talk about the the collaborations with artists in this in this exhibition. Um, I know to to try to curate an exhibition of of this time is, is probably one of the more overwhelming projects you can think of because of just the sheer amount of of material that there was. But um, I'd love to hear it, whether you ended up including any uh, artist collaborations or how you have shown them, uh, and then also thinking about the art that is included within the magazines and how one goes about showing those without cracking spines or taking out staples. Um, so I'd love to hear about that. Uh, 
Sure. That would be so Abigail. That, yeah, thank, thank you, Ty. Um, so that was not the, you know, the, 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 the primary uh, dimension of the, of the of the exhibit, but it's extremely uh, prevalent, for example, with the New York school. So, you know, the simple thing we did is sometimes we showed the books, you know, closed, sometimes we opened them. Uh, I can, you know, I could show you very briefly. Um, let me see. Uh, You know, here, so, you know, crazy composition is, uh, I think that's a George Schneeman uh, cover is, is, you know, it's, is open. And, and then we've opened and uh, this is the champ uh, on the right. You, we have the champ by Kenwood Elmsley with uh, illustrations um, by uh, Joe Brainard. Um, and I, I forget, you know, and, and then sometimes the illustrations are, are simply on the cover. I think it's Helen Frankenhalter did the cover of Barbara Guest, The Blue Stairs. So, you know, it, it was, you know, open or closed. And do I have, yeah, um, I should, well, I should have rotated it, but at the top of the slide, there is an open book. Uh, it's a collabor collaboration between Robert Duncan and Jess, and we have one of Jess's, you know, wonderful collage. Um, and also the, the Jack Spicer books, are, some of them are illustrated. So, you know, it's it's a very simple answer, open and close, and, you know, depending on, you know, for the sake of variety, and including some uh, uh, pictures in, in the slideshow. But you know, it this you know it, this is you know I'm sure you can be, become you know um, other exhibit you know focusing on 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 artists uh, and poets collaboration would have you know could have taken it much further. But you know, do you have an answer to that question? You know how how would you 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 would have to have several copies. You know, you could show a whole book, but you would need to you know, open in, in, you know, all the, all the pay, all the spreads open, but you would have to have as many copies as spreads. That would be one way of, of doing it without, you know, damaging the spines, but, um, that's one answer. Please. <laughs> Thank you all so much. It's been such a rich conversation, I feel like, with the exhibition, with the institution, with your memories, Alice. Thank you, all three of you. And, and as always, thanks to Fong and The Rail for giving us the space. And we're going to end by hearing from Abigail with some poetry. Yeah, thank you so much to you all for this stunning conversation. And thanks to everyone in the audience who asked questions. They were so great. Um, we do have a reading from Abigail now, and I'm going to share an audio. Um, Abigail, I'm not sure if you maybe want to tell us a little bit about what we're about to hear before I play it. Sure. Um, this is from a collaboration with Talia Field. It's a book that came out in the spring of 2020, uh, not a good time <laughs> to be promoting a book, so we never got to read from it. Uh, it's called Leave to Remain, Legends of Janus, and it's a kind of full spy novel on translation. But we had the good fortune, um, uh, Ben Williams uh, made an, an audio version of the book. And so, and since it's a choral book, I thought that in, in, you know, in, in, instead of reading from it, uh, I would ask, you know, Eleanor to to play, you know, the first five minutes from the book. And thank you so much, Cole and, and Eleanor and Alice and, and Michael for the great conversation. Thank you all in the audience for your questions. Leave to Remain, Legends of Janice by Talia Field and Abigail Lang. But what divinity shall I describe you to be, double-shaped Janus? 
for Greece has no god like you. Tell, at the same time, the reason why you alone, of the dwellers in the sky, see both what is at your back and what is before. While I was revolving thus in my mind, with tablet in hand, the house seemed brighter than before it was. Then, holy Janus, wondrous with his two-headed form, suddenly presented to my sight his double features. I was confounded, and felt my hair to stand on end with awe, and my breast was frozen with a sudden chill. Holding in his right hand a staff and a key in his left, he uttered these sounds to me from his front mouth. Laying aside your apprehensions, poet who record the days, learn what you ask and catch with all your mind my words. Me the ancients, for I'm an old thing called chaos. See you of how remote a period I saw the occurrences. Ovid, Fasti. Знаете, мы не вторгались в Украину. Janice at a Chinese restaurant in Paris. Did a doorway allow us to hold up despite desire? Or were, were we, we already, already in the, the gap? gap? Consider Janice. Two faces. One brain. Of a mind? Think, Think twice. twice. How does it at the gate? Which, Which way, way does your beard point, point tonight? tonight? Do omens attend upon beginnings? Later, may we break the cookie in two and split our fortune? Later, will the waiter come to take our order and, disobeying, disobeying it, reveal a scene playing on many fronts? If luck is the past, will fortune show the future? Or, or is, is it the, the other way? way? And, and the, the next, next thing will only return, return us, us to the past thing? thing? Later, may we deadlock. But, but that's, that's ahead of ourselves. Time. First, we must decide what kind of translation to pursue. We've come here for a traditional meal in an unfamiliar place. Or have we never met before now? Did, did someone, someone say we did? did? Two, Two trains, trains going in opposite directions, directions leave the station at the same time. On the witness stand, Doorkeeper of the, of the heavenly, heavenly court, court I, I look, look towards, towards both east and west at once. once. Will I speak in your turn? And you speak in mine? On, On the witness, witness stand, stand. The, the ancients, ancients call me chaos. And even now, a sign of my once confused state, my, my front, front and back, back appear the, the same. same. We want to. We really try to. But looking as we do, we can never look away. Yet do we see eye to eye? Trusting the translator has never been easy. They know the enemy language. We take their word for everything. Show who you really are. Easy for you to say. The waiters wait on our dropped hints. Gestures of readiness, menus in hand, names not requested, eyes not met, stares not stared. Follow, Follow me. me. As to a reader, not a hungry customer, or both. And our bumper sticker. Don't, Don't fuck, fuck with me, me. I have eyes in the rear. rear. Generations sanction movement. Time begins to end at a standstill. First, Charlemagne couldn't tell dead pagans from his own dead men. So he asked for a sign split in two. Thorns and briars grew up around the bodies of the pagans. Janus on the witness stand. My, My unbarred, unbarred gate stands, stands open wide, wide so that so when the people, people go to war, the, the return, return paths, paths open, open too. too. But why hide in peace and open your gates in war? Bar it in peacetime so peace cannot depart. How can we understand the cult of look, look both, both ways, ways before, before leaping? leaping? Can we know the instant the men became bearded men? A translation provides the first fiction, a double invented character, a metamorphosis. Hoist the flag, call men to arms, or recruit the vulnerable when they're wanting. Trick or trap them into vote or, or veto. Just a slip of a sound between tongue and brain. Wow, that was so amazing, Abigail. Thank you so much Thank for you. sharing that. <laughs> That was just, it was wonderful. Um, really, really special way to end the discussion today.
I'm, I'm just so grateful to all of you for being here and for your amazing contributions to the dialogue. Um, just so much, so much gratitude for you, Alice, Abigail, Mikael, and Cole. We'd also like to thank the Terra Foundation for American Art for sponsoring our NSC program and making our daily conversations possible and for supporting our archive, which you can explore on the Rails YouTube channel. The Rail has been free and independent for 23 years, and you can support our writers, production staff, and operations via a link in the chat. And join us tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. Paris time, for a conversation with Ghosts of a Dream featuring Adam Ekstrom, Lauren Waz, and Julie Reese. Um, huge thanks again to everyone for being here. And you can now all turn on your microphones and say hello and goodbye. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone. you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. That was so amazing. Merci. So great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. Next time we'll meet in Marseille. <laughs> <laughs>